everybody, welcome to the Skylounder, the Sky High, episode number 12. Here in Las Vegas, boys and girls, is where, yes, we finally have some preseason hockey going on. And yes, boys and girls, I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about a few things before the meat of this video, which is going to be the NFL weekend Sunday. But also on Sunday, happened to be at the Vegas Golden Knights game against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, fuck you, Arizona. But we got ourselves a Mark Stone bobblehead. So, hey, good shit. And Max Pacioretty getting the hat trick in the T-Mobile Arena where 16,000 people showed up. And yeah, of course, hockey doesn't work in Vegas. So 16,000 16, people have to just show up, right? And... Good game all around, but yeah, it's preseason. Shit's just going to happen, right? Shit's not going to get called. Shit's going to happen. And we just enjoy the product on the ice, right? That's that's all it is. And the funny part was, too, just a couple miles away in Las Vegas, we were going to be within proximity of the most clutch shot in this calendar year, next to Damian Lillard shot on Paul George. Dianica Hamby. Uh, Dianica, Dianica. I apologize if I am butchering your first name there, but Hamby! Uh, she was also nominated, I believe she won um, basically the sixth player of the year in the WNBA uh, for the Las Vegas Aces. And down 90 to 92 with about. Five or six seconds left. Hamby steals the ball from a Chicago Sky player. And with that quick steal, releases the ball barely a second in. And shot is good. 93 to 92. Aces shoot 4.8 seconds left. And hold on to that score. And head into the WNBA semifinals. Well done, ladies. Holy shit. Aces, y'all are just killing it. Um, my sincere hope as a Lakers fan is this, simply. Um, I want the Aces versus the Sparks. Because, to be honest, I, I don't rock Aces or Sparks gear. I, I just rep my Lakers. But I would love to see a battle between uh, one of the most coveted WNBA franchises in the Sparks and this new upcoming team in the Aces with a lot of great young pieces. Um, Asia Wilson. Um, oh gosh, what, what's the young young gal's name? Jackie Young. Um, the, the draft pick, uh, the Aces pick this season, number one overall. Uh, you also got Plum in there, who is my absolute favorite player in the Aces. I mean, she is just rock solid, does everything well. And so, best of luck to the Aces. Um, and also, best of luck to the Sparks. Because I know they won their game yesterday, too. But, boys and girls. Goddamn. The, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing right now, man. Sunday is always a great day. Because you had <coughs> preseason hockey. You had the WNBA semi, uh, you know, the quarterfinals going on. Single round elimination quarterfinals. And obviously throughout the entirety of the day, you have NFL football. There you are, boys and girls. We're going to move on to the football action. Because, my God, y'all deserve it. I deserve it. This football is just beautiful. Now, kids, we get started with the win. I am very much going to enjoy and boast about. I'm going to enjoy very much. The Seattle Seahawks. There we go. The Seattle Seahawks beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. First win in Heinz Field ever. And unfortunate news coming out for Pittsburgh. Big Ben will be out for the rest of the season. Uh, he will be undergoing a surgery for his elbow. And listen, do I think the Steelers are going to make the playoffs? No, I don't think so. But what I do think is Rudolph is a pretty serviceable quarterback. And you will be very surprised how well he does. Um, I think, yes, Seattle's 
secondary does leave a bit more wanting, but there is a confidence in this Mason Rudolph kid. And yeah, as, as much animosity I hold towards the Pittsburgh Steelers, I do, you know, wish that kid the best of luck because he, he's just a kid. He's not, he's not Rapist Burger. All right. This is a new, it's a new team. And I'll tell you what, Steelers, that defense, pretty spot on, if healthy. So, shit, man. All you got to do now is figure out this whole Tomlin situation. Because I don't think he's getting you anywhere, to be honest. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl. Great. Um, but through these last few years, it's been pretty evident that I he, he rides on the coattails of talent and unfortunately talent alone can't win you games sometimes it can but that isn't the only factor right it's not versatility is the name of the game baby versatility is the name of the game and a player who has really taken that philosophy to stride is lamar jackson lamar jackson led the baltimore ravens to a victory against the arizona coyotes and I got to tell you one thing right now. Pleasantly surprised. Lamar Jackson is doing so well. Um, he rushed 100 yards yesterday. He threw for over 200 yards yesterday. Just absolutely unbelievable uh, skills on this kid. And against an Arizona defense who, where I have said on the piggy skin picks where I have been wrong about a lot of things, but with the Arizona assessment, I think I was pretty spot on. They're a very, they're a very solid defense. Um, they're going to cause problems, and they kept the game really close. I mean, Kyler Murray did come back to try to get shit done, but you also have the Baltimore defense, which is one of the most well-rounded, all-around, solid defenses in the league. And I, I got to tell you one thing right now. I can't wait till October 20th. I can't wait to see Earl Thomas. And, yes, of course, there's, a, there's the competitive fan part of me where I hope you know, I hope the Seahawks kick your fucking ass, Earl. Like, I love Earl. I fucking love Earl Thomas. The energy that he has been bringing to this squad, his leadership um, through those years in the, well, the Legion of Boom since he was drafted. He was one of the most invaluable members of the squad. But, you know, unfortunate circumstances, uh, you know, between Super Bowl personnel, um, relationships, and, and, and shits, of, shits of that nature. Made things with the way they are. But I love Earl Thomas. Um, do not mistake my contempt uh, for the player during the game for my contempt for the human being. I think that that's completely wrong. Um, I really do wish nothing but the best for Earl. But if you're going to face my team on that field, I'm not going to cheer for you. <laughs> I'm going to cheer for my team. And you're my fucking enemy. But I can't wait till October 20th because I, I'm thinking this Baltimore team gets better. And it's crazy to think that, but bar from injuries, I think this team can definitely get better. The rushing game's great. And, you know, people just still joke about, oh, Lamar Jackson, he's just going to run all day. Like, yeah, they got Ingram in there too. Do you guys realize that? I mean, they got a lot of solid pieces on that team. So do not underestimate the Baltimore Ravens when they are down. Which, quick heads up, I do think they're going to lose the Kansas City Chiefs next week. But Baltimore has come out as one of the most surprising teams in the first two weeks. And of course, talks will be made about this next team. The San Francisco 49ers uh, beat Cincinnati at home. They actually routed the fuck out of them. 3-4 uh, possession game. I, it, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And you know, the thing is, after heaping massive praise and thinking Cincinnati would have won this game. Boy, oh boy. It's it's kind of hard to get a gauge of what, what Cincinnati is. Also kind of hard to get a gauge of what San Francisco is. Um, at one point, I do think, yes, San Francisco does have a fantastic defense. And yeah, that Bosa kid is probably just going to be a fucking ace for them by like week 10, 12. And it's just going to be the most unbearable shit. But... Cincinnati is curious because in two games, 
Andy Dalton has thrown for 700 yards. So, that's a bit curious to me. Um, San Francisco, however, yeah, looking good. Looking good. Coming out of the gates 2-0. Not the only NFC West team that is 2-0. I mean, I'll Obviously, the Seahawks, and we'll also talk about the third team that is 2-0. I mean, by virtue of elimination, yeah, we talked about the Cardinals losing twice. Guess, the, guess who the fuck is 2-0? Yeah, the Rams. We'll talk about the Rams in a little bit later. But, boys and girls, let's keep going with the Detroit Lions facing off against the Los Angeles Chargers in Detroit. And they are able to edge out the Chargers at home. Ugly game. Absolutely ugly game. I mean, you have two quarterbacks who are... For whatever reason, hyped up more than they should be. And the the name of the game for this one was just sloppiness. And for me thinking Detroit was absolutely going to win this one, like, I'm glad that they won. But simultaneously, like, Jesus, like, th this is ugly. This was ugly. And as for the Chargers, it just has to be said, like, your team isn't going anywhere, man. I remember people... Even during the whole Melvin Gordon contract, kept saying the Chargers team is going to win the division. I said, how? Phillip Rivers is only getting older. The physicality is going to get to him at one point or another. We see Big Ben just go down. He's not even 40. And so we'll, we'll see. Is he 40? Shit. My math and uh, biography shit is kind of off sometimes, a lot of times. But Detroit gets a win. Matt Patricia still... Kind of shitty, but I mean, he's getting the job done. So what are you, what are you really going to complain about at this point? Yeah, he, you know, you're one zero and one, which like that that's fucking weird, dude. Like, yeah, the Detroit's one zero and one, and I just realized the Cardinals aren't zero and two; they're zero one one. That is really weird. But boys and girls, weirder things have happened in the NFL. Like people thinking Kirk Cousins is going to carry a team. To victory against the Packers. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cute. And I, I got I got Vikings friends. Okay, I do. But I told them the truth all the time. Kirk Cousins is a bang average quarterback, and you gave that man so much goddamn money that you are you have fucked your own organization. Despite the fact that you have some of the best talents in the league in your squad, you are squandering them because of this one fucking position player in Kirk Cousins. It's it's astounding. It's absolutely astounding. And the Green Bay Packers aren't idiots. They're not. They completely wrecked their shit. All right, Green Bay owns Minnesota. What else is new? What else is fucking new at this point? Okay. Green Bay fans, I got to give you a shout out. Aaron Rodgers looks okay. In all estimates, in my eyes, I don't think he looks all that great. Okay? But everything around him, holy crap. It's really impressive. I think, really, that Green Bay defense is getting to next level. Um, I think you got a young defense who is going to get their swag in there. And don't be surprised if this is a top five defensive team by what thanksgiving i wouldn't be surprised minnesota oh boy you know you would think because i'm wearing purple and yellow i'm gonna be on your side now this is la gear black mamba kobe bryant okay not for you guys you miserable fuckers get to deal with kirk cousins kirk cousins I remember a couple of years ago, I got into it with this guy. No, not not an angry argument, just a, just a simple debate argument. Where I flat out said Kirk Cousins is trash. I don't think he's all that good. And my point wasn't really based on anything. And I just said that kind of out of spite and production based on what I barely seen at the time. This was a few years ago where I didn't really watch the NFL as much. Guy gets super defensive about it. Tells me Kirk Cousins is great. And the, the story and context behind that is, uh, you know, guy's an avid player of fantasy football. And, you know, it does it does show, yeah, Kirk Cousins does accumulate quite a number of points throughout the entirety of a season. 
But that's when I started really paying attention to Kirk Cousins. And what I've really noticed more than anything these last few years is this dude is a bang average quarterback at best. At best. Most times, it's hidden under the guise of he's tall and fairly athletic looking and can throw decent passes and pat the numbers late game. However, yesterday late game, he fucked up real bad. And that just goes to show you, in my fucking opinion, and based on what I've seen, Kirk Cousins isn't even all that good. It's a fucking astounding idea. The Vikings gave nearly 100 mil. Not fully 100 mil, because the fucking idiots in the LA Rams that that shit with golf, which, again, that's a whole other fucking thing. I could laugh at all day. But... The Vikings essentially fucked themselves with that contract. Um, you're going to have guys like Dolphin Cook, Adam Thielen, uh, Rudolph, looking at the head coach and the organization like, what the what the fuck are we doing here with this guy? With, with, with this clown? What the fuck is this shit? Like, are, am I really going to waste my playing years with this cat? Wasting my stats? Wasting my fucking engine? Wasting the fucking minutes I can have on my legs? Come on, man. That's why when people kept hyping up Blake Bortles, I was getting mad. I was like, well, what, what are you talking about? Stop. Bad quarterbacks are like, just like, you're masking the problem. You're putting makeup on just blemishes and scars. There's nothing to take away from the actual truth itself. That you have a really bad quarterback. And at, a, at best, he's average. But Minnesota fans will keep telling them, so like, oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. All right. Well, moving on to another delusional fan base, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Houston Texans. Oh, my God. Jacksonville. Yeah, I, like, Big Dick Nick is out. I get it. But wow. I, I wow. Like, who is Leonard Fournette now, right? I, I don't know. Is he injured? I actually genuinely don't know. Because I didn't, I, I didn't bother watching this game. I didn't. I just saw Houston did okay on the offensive and defensive side. I mean, to, to be quite honest, a very low-scoring game where both quarterbacks looked razzle-frazzle because, good God, what what is an O-line anymore, right, boys and girls? And Jacksonville loses it on a... Failed two-point conversion. Thus resulting in a 12-13 loss. <sighs> yeah, as for Houston, yeah, this is a lucky win. An unlucky loss last week. And like I said, this is a Houston Texans team where literally last season, this was the same kind of shit, but it was going their way perfectly. They were winning games on these lucky circumstances. And... Somehow, some way, I still think both teams come out as losers in this one. For whatever reason, despite a winner and a loser being in this, you know, matchup, I feel Jacksonville lost in the in the perspective of you guys don't look good anymore. You guys look like you're a fucking pretender team, you know, thinking you guys you guys have a chance in the playoffs. Where clearly this is a five win team. Holy hell! And then you got the Houston Texans. Where, all right, cool, Deshaun can throw things well, yes, but who is protecting him? You're going to get him killed. And then defensively, like, are you are you going to blow it again? Like, again? Really? Dude, I, I don't know. There, There's way too many questions. Way too many questions. And yes, just like the ridiculous, mysterious nature of A.B., New England go into Miami and yeah, you know, minus nineteen was a generous number. They won forty three to nothing in Miami. You know, with AB having a fantastic game yesterday, segue today into another accuser stepping up. And now all the transgressions of Antonio Brown coming on Sports Illustrated. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to sit here 
and tell you the honest truth that I have been one of the biggest critics of Antonio Brown. I have on this channel an entire video of me bitching about Antonio Brown and why he's such a fucking fucking psychopath and a cancer and a near sociopath who is getting everything in his way. But despite all of that, I sit here before you now and tell you this. Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, that's justice. To me, I have to see all the evidence. I have to see every part of the fact that points to a shadow beyond a doubt that this dude is guilty. In my eyes, the circumstances are a little bit too questionable. Um, am I siding with AB right now? No. What I am citing is a circumstance of all this happening. Context and perspective, boys and girls. Yes, Antonio, I still stick by it. Antonio Brown is a cancer. The dude has shown near sociopathic levels of behavior throughout his, his tenure in Pittsburgh, his minor you know, tenure in Oakland. And right now, his even quiet persona in new england it's all calculated shit all right i'm not taking anything away from what i've said okay until again prove me wrong where i will admit flat out if, if i'm proven wrong cool like i'm wrong i'm not gonna get fucking like defensive about that shit if i'm wrong if i'm wrong like fuck it happens but it's also a bit odd second accuser just comes out after a patriots drubbing in miami Right, like all all this weird political fucking shit coming out in in the sports realm, which like what I what I, what have I always said? Leave fucking politics out of my sports ball. Don't put orange juice in my cereal, bitch. Leave that shit out of there, man. Nasty motherfuckers. Yeah, you know who's a nasty motherfucker? The goddamn Miami Dolphins. You guys are disgusting. Like, are you really a football team? Like, are, are, like, are you a high school team or are you a college team? Are you a Canadian football league team? Like, what, what team are actually are you? I'm very curious. Because Minka Fitzpatrick does not deserve this. Kenyon Drake does not deserve this. Leave those boys alone. Get them the fuck out of there. I'm just saying, man. Like, oof. 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 Anyways, let's move on to the next. Oof. The New York Giants. Oh, God. The, the Giants shit the bed. Against the Buffalo Bills. Who, I gotta say, man, the Buffalo Bills win back-to-back -back games in MetLife Stadium, week one and week two, coming back from a 16-0 lead, or deficit, against the New York Jets, and flat out owns Eli. Like, they just owned Eli on Sunday, and Eli just, I got nothing but respect and love for Eli, but Eli, come on, man. This just... For the better sake of your legacy, I would just say give the job to Daniel Jones. I, I I got nothing but respect for Eli. I do. This guy's a fucking Hall of Famer. Yet, every minute he's, he's on that field, it just feels like you are really lowering your ratings for the Hall of Fame, dude. I don't even know. Like, what are you doing? And I know there are people who just love the game so much they want to stay, but as an adult, you also have to kind of face reality at times, right? Just looking in the mirror thinking, oh, what, are you, what, are you, what am I doing? What are you doing? All right, figuring shit out. But Buffalo looks like they got shit figured out. Their defense is stellar. Um, Josh Allen can, I think, step up year two. And let's keep a close eye on Buffalo because holy shit. Buffalo is 2-0. Yeah, I know they beat two garbage opponents. And I get all of that. But 2-0. We'll see how that shit goes. And of course, you know, Cincinnati last season was on 3-0, 4-0. Look how they turned out last season. So anything can happen. Anything can happen. You can go from good to trash literally week to week. Just like the Tennessee Titans. Holy fuck. You host a goddamn fucking Indiana Colts. Indianapolis Colts. Without Andrew Luck, at home in Tennessee, and you still lose? Oh my god. 
Tennessee Titans. I. Why do you keep doing this to your fucking fans, man? You guys are the dick kickers of dick kickers. You know that? Track this back all the way from when they were the Oilers. Just unbelievable and copious amounts of dick punching to their fan base. It, it's it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. As for Indy, dude, kudos. Jacoby, fantastic game. Defense doing well. Like I said, boys and girls, I think Indianapolis, they could be losing a lot of games, but they're going to be fun watch and lose. But holy shit, they, they're one and one. And they lost that last one in overtime, unfortunately. But they, they really look like winners of that game in my eyes. But there you go, boys and girls. Sometimes you get to, you're you going to get proven wrong. Just like those people who thought Dallas was going to go down this week. No, no. Dallas beat the Washington Redskins. Handedly, Adrian Peterson. Fifth all-time rusher in TDs. Surpasses Jim Brown. Yes, the great Jim Brown. And he is, I believe, three or four short of surpassing Walter Payton. Really let that process through your head. Adri like We have witnessed the career of one of the greatest rushers of all time. And Adrian Peterson. Even in his latter years, right now, he is getting those numbers in. And yes, I will talk about the Dallas Cowboys in a bit here. But really, guys, let's put into context and perspective of what Adrian Peterson is. He is, I believe, one of the last few running backs of his of his generation and of his prototypical kind of, you know, guy. The Jim Browns, the the Walter Paytons, those like I in my eyes, those power guys. And so kudos to AP. That is just unbelievable, unbelievable. Surpassing Jim, sur surpassing Jim Brown in anything, in terms of records, is. Immense. Because in, in my eyes, Jim Brown is always the best running back ever in NFL history, ever. Then it's Walter. Then it's Emmett Smith. Sorry. it's it, That's just how it is sometimes in my eyes. But speaking of Emmett Smith, Dallas looked great. I mean, they, they've been looking fucking great, man. And yeah, Case Keenum did, you know, number on that, you know, Dallas business, you know, the, their, their defense. But still... Dallas's office is rolling. Uh, Dak looks fantastic. And yeah, it might be for the contract thing. And maybe Dak goes down to earth a little bit after a few weeks. But, but. It's like what I said after the wild card loss. Um, Dallas versus Seattle. I said, wow, Dak really looked like a general that game. And he did so well. And I feel like he carried that momentum forward. Yes, they lost to the Rams. I do understand that. But I feel that he carried mentally that momentum forward from that win and i think he's only gonna get better um numbers like i said numbers might go down obviously but watch that just keep raising his stocks up man and kudos to the young man i know people hate it when dallas gets any credit but i, don't, I, I, like, I like Dak. I don't, I don't hate Dak. all right seems like a good dude seems like a good guy just like kermit the frog Patrick Mahomes. My homeboy. Oh, yay! Kansas easily beats the Oakland Raiders. But in the first quarter, it really looked like Oakland put up a game. They did. And then Kansas just said, fuck that. Nope. Scoreless first quarter for Kansas. 10 to nothing. And then they beat them, what, like? 20 some 30 some I don't know. I lost track after like the fourth touchdown by Patrick Mahomes. I thought, yeah, this is over. There, there is no fucking way you're coming back from this shit. I kept encouraging my Oakland friend, like, yeah, dude, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna cover. And then nope. Nope. Did not cover at all. Nope. And it's okay, boys and girls, because expectation also always leads to disappointment. Just like Joe Flacco. Up to Temper Broncos. Losing to Chicago on a field goal to Pinheiro. Hooray. Chicago got a field goal in there. What are, you, what are you celebrating? You still have a really mediocre quarterback. And an offense that just seems like they don't really want to do much. And yeah, Denver. Uh, 
0-2. Not a great start. Joe Flacco. Not a great start. Tur. Not a great start. Tur. Okay. When are you going to start Drew Locke? All right. Sorry. Sorry, Elway. I really got to ask. When are you going to start Drew Locke? Because at this point, you're going to have a riot. Okay. If you're a Broncos fan... And you are looking at all of this shit in context. I'm thinking, oh my god, how are we 0-2? Well, because you got a quarterback who wants to throw away games every fucking week. That's fucking why. Holy shit. Yeah, I get it. Super Bowl MVP years ago. Yeah. Recently, last five years, not the case. Not the case at all. So, let's live in the now. And... From this point forward, I'm just going to bitch about referees. Especially with the Chicago game and the next game and the Rams and the New Orleans. Chubb tackling Trubisky and calling that roughing the pass. I'm like, what the, what the fuck are we talking about here? Rushing the passer like that? Like that? that, that what? What? Ah. Ah! And then you had this that next game, New Orleans versus Rams. Rams winning easily after Drew Brees injures his thumb, hand injury, out for the next six weeks. And yeah, Seattle has New Orleans uh, in Seattle next week. Am I glad the chances are higher that Seattle can pull off a victory? Slightly, uh, but Drew Brees being... A brilliant quarterback and a man I respect very much. It's it's really hard to see someone like that go down with an injury like that. Um, and, and when you see the clip of him just trying to grip a football on the sideline and just not having any feeling on that hand, you really feel for that guy. Six weeks? I'd say more like eight. I'd say more like eight. Then It's also going to be dependent on how Teddy Bridgewater does. If Teddy Bridgewater, let's say hypothetically, goes what? winless in all those games somehow some way then yeah they're probably gonna think okay we don't have to rush him if they win all of them hypothetically too also you don't have to rush him if you win half and half it's like all right that that's when it's question mark like should we start breeze or not but again refs Blowing the whistle prematurely after a clear fumble by Jared Goff and Cam just is it Cam Jordan, right? Yeah. Blanket on the fucking name there. Cam Jordan just running into the end zone, and that's called that whistle blown on that play. And I know New Orleans fans are just going to fucking hate on the refs all day and every day, but the refs in totality of the league has to fix their shit all around. Passer interference. Offense and defense, all of this shit has to get figured out. And somebody posted a brilliant little thing on Twitter yesterday. Because the refs are still fucking trash. That referees should be fined for mistakes. And I agree. And there was, yes, an explanation as to why they can't do that right now because of collecting the collective bargaining agreement and how that's working um, still in terms of uh, negotiations. But still, something has to be done. This is absolutely ridiculous. And what was ridiculous, too, was the last game of the night. The Philadelphia Eagles versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons pull off with a close win, but... Wow. Everybody died during this game receivers and the eagles numbers of players again repeating from last year and year two of the atlanta bullshit and somehow some way carson wentz who looked like he had a bit of a rib injury and did technically go through concussion protocol but was deemed all right Carson Wentz proves again that he is the best quarterback. Probably in that division of the NFC East. Um, interception, yes. But the talent on that young man is... It's 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 unbelievably good. It's crazy good. 
that that throw he made falling down having the coordination and eye and, and arm strength to get that down is just the craziest shit and if you're just a fan of quarterbacks you have to i think you have to love carson Wentz. i think you do i think there's there's part of everybody that wants a quarterback that can be emotionally stable can get down the field throw those long balls throw those clutch balls Carson Wentz is one of them. And unfortunately, yeah, Ertz was an inch or two short of a first down from fourth and eight. But I think Eagles fans have to take this into consideration. Despite the loss yesterday on Sunday Night Football, there is a lot of positives, especially with that offense. Yes, defensively, there is a lot of questionable things regards to the secondary where... You made Matt Ryan look like a fucking pro bowler again, like just the, which I don't agree with at all. But yeah, I wasn't entirely impressed with Atlanta. Um, I'm more hopeful about how Philadelphia will probably turn out in the next few weeks compared to how Atlanta I feel will play down. Um, I'm never crazy about Atlanta. Uh, I don't think they're all that good. I'll take a flag for this shit, but I, I don't really care. I just don't think they're all that good. I think they're more hype than substance. And you're going to see Quinn just... Oh, one of the most overrated coaches in the NFL. Just having those fucking toxic fanboys just get on everyone's ass. Like, yeah, he's the best for a reason. Like, yeah? You sure about that? You nearly choked away another fucking game in the dying minutes of another game. Or you have to win. But yeah, Falcons fans, I have yeah, keep telling yourselves how good you are. 28-3. Oh, you shouldn't have run it. We still have one, bitch. From what the fuck are you talking about? With the head coach, with the same GM, with the late great Paul Allen, with our linebacker, two linebackers actually, KJ Wright too, Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson. So what are you saying, kids? It don't mean a thing without a ring. And I, I know I don't I know I don't have a ring, but I don't mean a thing. Boys and girls, that does it for me. So follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Clutch shot. Oh, fuck off. Hamby!